movieweb.com. So um, I wanted to begin by asking you uh, a little bit about your character on the, on the series. Tell me a, bit, a little bit about, what, uh, about the character uh, you play. Peggy, uh, I think of I, her as an innocent who was taken care of, the pampered pet, mm -hmm. and grew up with, with servants and married. And it, my circumstances before the first episode are that my husband and daughter were killed in an auto accident. And I'm left to raise my grandson, and my husband has gambled all of our millions of dollars away. So I had servants and they, you know, and lived this life. I had never written a check. Um, the servants, uh, I think I'm repeating myself. And suddenly I'm living in my car, I've run out of money with my grandson. And I move into this place with Ocean, who becomes really my mentor. I mean, she's really my angel, teaching, sort of teaching me and guiding me because I have never done anything on my own. And I'm also deeply depressed. And my grandson has an ADD problem, so that we're dealing with a lot of issues. And, and I sort of, well, with. Um, it's out there. Uh, oh, like kind of. <laughs> oh, are you still having it? <laughs> this extreme depression uh, and trying to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. You're not you the basketball fully basketball functioning basketball. Yeah. 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 at that point. Where I'm in bed most, most of the time, yeah. which is not good for the child, it's <laughs> not good right. for me, it's not good for anyone. And having to learn to function on my own for the first time in my life. Yeah, so a lot of adjustments were carried. Did you also uh, deal with uh, breast cancer this past season, too? Is that correct? Or, yes. Right? That, that happens to That's going to be happening in season three? With, that with, that, with um, Lupe. Oh, with Lupe's character. Ah, okay. okay. Mine had been more of. Um, Depression and, and pills. But the show is set up in a way on the web that allows it to really, with the toolbar, to allow it um, interactive with audiences where if a character is going through a certain issue, the audience can, can. And that's something that television and film can't really offer. Can you talk about that aspect of the show? That's what, uh, to me, uh, uh, I said, uh, when I, I started it, I, I did the show uh, artistic, for artistic reasons. And it has become so much more fulfilling because it's of a, a doing a greater good for the planet and helping people with these issues. And I, I, I've seen, as I said, you know, a woman in the grocery store said, pounds, caught something before it killed me yeah. because of this show. And so being, I, I've even used it yeah, for some fi fi financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using the toolbar. Is it more fulfilling as an artist to know that, obviously as an artist, I mean, you always want to be making art that's going to entertain, but that it's also educating and helping people. I mean, it must be very rewarding. Yes. And, and it's, I, I think it's usually ending on a note that teaches and enlightens and uplifts. Mm -hmm. That's the, the, the wonder of work with Robert, who I, I'm sure insists on that, and the people in, in the project, that we want to do that, not just entertain, but it's wonderful. I think it's the highest form of, of writing and acting, you know, of the arts, that when we can entertain and, and teach and enlighten mm -hmm. at the same time and make someone's life better, that's, that's I mean, it kind of sounds, I, I don't want to sound higher than thou, but it, it, it's the reason I really wanted to do it. Sure. I mean, I think of our art as something that can heal. Yeah. So. Great. Well, and tell me about working with Robert. I mean, he's such a you know, great director. I mean, this must be amazing. He's a beacon of joy, a beacon of light. And one night, it was very late, and I, I looked at him, and he looked fresh as a daisy. <laughs> we were all like, and, and I said, well, you're like joyful grace under pressure. And he said, oh, this is nothing. 
I've done a lot harder than this. <laughs> and he started telling me stories about Hollywood Shuffle. Sure, they yeah. didn't have permits. And he said, I'm saying, oh, yeah, I'm doing a student film and all this kind of stuff. So, so he's... Just, yeah, I, I mean. Well, it seems for shooting for the internet that it would be more like an independent film. Where yes. I, I understand that it obviously is. the cameras and acting, it's all the same, but you know, it seems that less money and less time and you're running and gunning. And is it that? And since it is maybe that, do you feel more comfortable knowing that, you know, Hollywood Shuffle, that Robert comes from that background of being able to get it done yeah, on the fly? Yeah. I remember actually when he, he was on a talk show, that was my first awareness of him, when he said he put it on a credit card and I went, boy, that takes guts. <laughs> uh, and, and, out for and then loved the work. <laughs> yeah. And I've loved his work and so many other things. And uh, the, the thing is that, that we're doing the same quality of work, maybe better sometimes. Right. Because we do, we have to be more inventive than if it was a huge budget and you could do it with special effects as opposed to having to do it in the, the scene and in the, the, the relationships. So in some ways it makes it deeper and more profound. So, I mean, I love the indie world because of that. Uh, I like relationship driven things. Uh, I mean, I love great action, but I, I mean, I, I like doing my own stunts, but, <laughs> but I do prefer this yeah. kind of writing and... Yeah, it's great. It seems like a perfect fit. But, uh, oh, and he's so, it, just an example of his attitude towards the work. It's like when he thinks he's got everything he needs in the can, he'll say, one more for love. Right. That's great. <laughs>